and welcome to another episode of Harrison Hobbies. So this is going to be my first video in the past year and a half or so. I've been wanting to restart this channel now for the past year and a half. Uh, I enjoy the community that we've built here together. I enjoy these videos. I enjoy tearing stuff down, trying to hack it a little bit, and seeing what we can get from it. So uh, I figured a good first video for my return here would be the thing that set my channel, I guess, uh, the thing that really started to uh, kick my channel off. And that would be the Milwaukee Top Off. So a little bit of a story. Uh, one of the first videos that I did was hacking that battery, right? I took a 90 watt Lenovo power brick, uh, an old legacy power brick, and figured out how to power a Milwaukee M18 battery with that. Coincidentally, uh, that video had been up for a few months and Milwaukee announced the top off. And so everybody typing in AC adapter, which is the top off here, uh, yielded my video. And so whenever they made the announcement on this, the views on my video had shot up, right? I mean, it was back in those days, I had like 20 subscribers. My channel was complete flatline. Uh, and then the day that they announced this, the channel really took off. When I got this, I figured that this was going to be kind of a Swiss army knife that I could bring with me everywhere. I'd always have backup power in case I needed to run my laptop, charge a phone. And the fact that you have 175 watt of AC power, I figured could be pretty usable. Now that I've had it for a little while, um, unless you're really paying attention, things either don't come close to needing 175 watts or they need well over. We've got the little miniature Wagner uh, heat gun here, great for applying heat shrink, um, you know, drying, epoxy, whatever. And even this won't run off this, right? Because this is 175 watt and this requires 300. I've had this now for about six months. Some of the pros of this is the fact that you have a 45 watt USB-C PD. Uh, it, it's a pro in the fact that it's barely enough to like keep my computer running here. And again, if you're pairing it with, you know, a 12 amp hour battery from Milwaukee, you get some decent runtime, right? Like this will fully charge my laptop uh, over the course of an afternoon. The fact that you have your AC 175 watt, I can take, you know, the OEM 130 watt power brick for this, plug it in, and then I get to charge at full speed. So that is kind of nice. DeWalt makes a competitor to this for $99. What $99, same price as this, will get you is the battery um, topper that gives you 60 watt PD, no outlet, but it does give you the ability to 60 watt charge your battery. So, you know, if you plug your battery in here and you plug your DeWalt 60 watt PD into a wall, it will actually charge your battery. So that... I would take the ability to charge a battery over USB-C PD over an AC outlet any day of the week. In my experience, there is no difference in output between something like, you know, a little 3.0 battery. Uh, again, these are the high output, same as the big battery. So there, of course, this one doesn't have near the current draw, but at 175 watt, you're not getting close to the current draw. So we'll, we'll test with this one just because it's, uh, you know, got a little bit more life in it. So we may not have to swap it out as quickly and theoretically we'll get less voltage sag. Got a Klein tester here so we can look at what kind of power it's delivering and we'll plug it into the laptop and see that yes, in fact, it does really charge. And then after that, we will uh, plug in our oscilloscope over here and we'll check out the waveform. Some quick little features about this. Uh, in addition to the, the bracket that we have here, so you can hang this on the side of a card or over a stud if maybe you're doing work uh, overhead. Uh, it's also got two rubber um, little flaps here at the top. We can see that we have your AC here. You press that button for a second. And I don't know if you can hear it. Maybe we'll try. Um, but you press it once and it turns on the AC and then you press the USB and then that activates your USB. You have an A and you have a C right there. There's a view of all the details. If you are interested in reading any of those in further detail, please pause the video. So we have our Klein tools here plugged in and we have my laptop here. This laptop is designed to charge at 130 watts as the Dell OEM adapter. Uh, it will charge and operate pretty well at 90. 45 is basically the limit of what it'll do. And I mean, really, if you're actually using it for anything real, uh, 45 watts is going to keep it probably keep everything throttle, right? I mean, the CPU alone, uh, I think boosts up to 55 watts on this. So that will keep it zeroed. So 
you know, this thing is rated at 45 watts, uh, it says there on the placard and on their marketing materials. But as we can see here, I mean, this thing is now pushing 53, 58 watts. So it's well above its design right there. The laptop is at 55%, so it's charging. We could sit here all day watching this, but uh, I feel like we've probably got enough detail. Let's dive into some of the more juicy and we'll say controversial things now. So we'll, we'll kick off the testing here. Uh, the setup is going to be, we will first plug in our oscilloscope here uh, and we will turn on our AC power and now we can see the glory that is the square wave. There's uh, quite a lot of bleed over. And so what we're seeing is, uh, we're seeing this thing way overshoot. So what should be, you know, it's positive and then negative with a big overshoot to the point where it's not even forming like a remote sine wave, right? Like look at some of the videos of the inverter generators that I've done in the past. That should be what a sine wave looks like. Okay. So uh, setup is here now. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the top off here sitting on its side. We have a 1x FLIR line splitter going to a FLIR DC. Uh, for some reason it's a 0.34 and I cannot for the life of me figure out uh, how to zero out the current on this, but it's in DC mode. The risk of this kind of waveform is terrible for anything with a motor. Uh, and that's because, kind of, as we've talked about in previous videos, sensitive electronics like laptops don't care about that, right? Like they can rectify this waveform into a DC current, no problem. Where you get into issues uh, also isn't with inductive loads. So uh, something like, uh, or sorry, resistive loads. So something like the heating element inside of our Wagner heat gun here could care less about this waveform. Where we have problems is when you have an inductive load, like a motor, right? Because you're creating a magnetic field and then you have your rotor spinning inside of that magnetic field. Uh, there's a good chance that I'm going to get some of these words backwards. Um, but basically you've got your, your magnetic field and whenever you are have a nice sine wave, it can kind of pull it and as it hits one pole, you're gonna be kind of in a positive and then it'll suck itself to it but the momentum will carry it. And so then the next wave over here will be negative and so it will pull itself. Uh, whenever you run into a square wave, you're positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Uh, and so you end up with that jerking. And not only that, but because we have these weird peaks that are kind of extending past, you're going to go there and then you're actually going to have a motive force trying to switch it back instantly. Uh, and so if you use this to power things like, uh, uh, like a, a fan, uh, this fan is going to whine, it's going to hate itself, and you're going to burn that motor out very quickly. So we can treat this as a sacrifice, and you probably can't hear it very well, but it, it is making a weird, chattery whine sound. Uh, and we can see in here that we're only at 21 watts. Again, we're well under the capacity here. Our waveform hasn't cleared up at all, so that really isn't doing anything. So let's, uh, let's put on something a little heavier uh, and we'll see if we can get it to pop real quick here. So that heavy thing will be our, our heat gun. So the heat gun here is at 210, 211 watts and it tripped it. So whenever we hit the overload, we ran it for you know 210 watts it said uh, and now that's on, that's blinking. So to remedy that, we will unplug, replug back in and now we're back in business. Okay, as we burn out our fans with this terrible, terrible waveform running 38 watts, we've got a Bosch charger here and we have a DeWalt charger. Um, that should be some hints on some other upcoming projects. So now we're up to 63 and 76. And we're running around 130 watts and the waveform still sucks. This though is whining more than I would like it to. We could probably add in a little bit more wattage if we felt so inclined, but um, realistically it's rated for 175 watts. We're using most of that and uh, you know it's doing what it's doing. The important thing here is that we see what the waveform actually looks like. Uh, holding this up to the microphone here, I just unplugged everything. The fan's still going because it's warm. Conclusion for this adapter, 
Uh, it actually, and to be honest, I hadn't tested this before, uh, even though it's supposedly rated at 45 watts for USB-C output, um, the fact that we were pushing 55 closer to 60 watts, that's pretty impressive and I think pretty rare for a manufacturer to derate, uh, though I don't think Milwaukee's ever been guilty of overstating uh, what, their, what their tools can do, at least in most of the testing I've seen. Uh, so we have stronger than expected performance from the USB, um, the USB-C here. The outlet, again, you know, we were up at 210 watts, so it's handling a peak startup load of 210. I think maybe we even got to 250. The waveform on this sucks, right? And this is, uh, this gives you the waveform that you get whenever you buy like a $20 DC to AC inverter off Amazon that plugs into your cigarette lighter. Uh, I know that Milwaukee was trying to hit a price point with this, but the quality of the waveform on here is just atrocious. Again, if you're plugging a laptop in, it probably really doesn't matter. But I think that probably most people who buy this think that they're going to be able to run other stuff with motors without any ill effect. Uh, and I think if you make that a habit, you will be unpleasantly surprised with uh, what will happen to your tools. If your only KPI is just getting a cheap outlet, uh, I don't know that you know having to spend a hundred dollars plus on a battery plus a hundred dollars plus on this is the right move with the waveform. Uh, you know you can go on and buy like an Anchor Powerhouse 90 that has what 60 or 100 watts of USB-C, 100 watts of outlet uh, for around 130 bucks. So you know, granted, it's yeah, half the size of this battery, it's double the size of this battery. Uh, and that's, you know, you'll save yourself 70 bucks. It charges via USB-C. Uh, so if your only goal is to be charging up your laptop and keeping yourself running on the go, I think that there are better solutions. If you're at a job site and you're swimming in M18 batteries, then this is certainly the way to go. You know, we probably have a lot of folks in the trades who watch this channel, a lot of garage and DIY enthusiasts. So uh, I'm sure a lot of folks have this. Tell me, what do you power? What is the use case for you having purchased this? Uh, whether it's home use, road warrior, uh, in the trades, you know, on job sites a lot. In addition, uh, if you can like and subscribe, uh, that would really help out the channel. I have started using a new app called Kinet, K-I-N-N-E-T. This is not sponsored. If you're interested in joining me on there, uh, you can type my name in, Sam Harrison. And if you decide to join Kinet and connect with me on there, uh, feel free to schedule a coffee chat. And above all else, thank you for watching and check back soon for more videos.